Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to continue our work with Law of Signs, Day 2. And we're going to focus on something that we didn't even address the first time, which is the ambiguous case. You'll see this little flow chart that I have in front of you right here. Um, all the examples that I asked you to do yesterday were this case or this case. This is uh, the given information, whether it was two consecutive angles and then a side, two consecutive sides and then an angle, or a side contained between two given angles. And these two cases, the ASA and the AAS, have one solution only and all the time, and you always use law of signs to do it. The middle case, the SSA case, is ambiguous. In this case, it is possible to have no triangles, just one triangle, or sometimes it's possible to have two triangles based on the given information. Today we're going to work through three cases and understand why each of the three cases arise. This is a fairly comprehensive video that's going to cover two class periods of work. There's going to be one worksheet. There's only 10 problems on it, but each problem is fairly complex. And by the end of it, you're going to report to me number four, number eight, and number 10 on Schoology. Now, on to today's material. Um, the reason that a case can be ambiguous with the given information, suppose we were given these three pieces of information, an angle, a side, and the opposing side to the angle. So I'm in this situation of uh, two consecutive sides and an angle are given to me. If you take a look at this drawing, picture this side right here like a little pendulum that's swinging back and forth. And you can see how it would be possible with the given information to create a triangle that's the outside of this shape and a triangle that is the obtuse angle, uh, kind of the smallest triangle in this shape. Now, depending on the type of information given, um, that could result in two triangles like we just kind of outlined there. Um, but if this leg is too short, it won't even reach down here, so there won't be a solution. And it is possible that this, if this leg were like super long, if it were longer than 10, say, it would not make it possible to swing the pendulum over to the left, but we could still swing it out to the right and get only one possible triangle. So when we're working within the context of this little flow chart, the first thing I want you to do always, always, always is draw a picture and label everything with A's, B's, and C's. That way you'll be able to determine, do I have two consecutive angles and a side? Am I in side, 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 angle? Or am I in angle, side, angle? And by using this flow chart, you can just directly see, oh, well, I know I'm going to have one solution. I know I'm going to have one solution. Those are the easy cases, the ones I gave you yesterday. And if you're in the middle with the SSA case, this is the most tedious case that you're going to get this section. And uh, we're going to have to go through each and every possibility. And I'll show you how to do that with three examples today. The other thing I'll mention is that there is a second and a third video listed for this section on my website. And the second video has a little animation showing how this all works uh, if you're a visual person. I might suggest watching that before continuing. So let's start with our first example. I'm going to give you these three pieces of given information and it's a very plain looking problem. You have to create everything else. So the first thing I want you to try to do is try to draw a triangle with those three properties. So if you go ahead and do it, if you want to pause the video and try it yourself, go ahead. I'm going to write through it right here. Um, so the first piece of information I'm given is an angle. So I'm going to draw an angle that's about 38 degrees. Um, I have no idea how long each side is. I could draw both sides dashed, meaning that I don't really know how long each side is. But I know that this little b goes along with this big b because they're opposing sides and opposing angles. So they're corresponding angle and sides. So I know that there's going to be a side out here with a length of 6. So I'm going to draw a little tab out there. And I'm not sure if this 6 is going to reach all the way down and intersect where my other line is yet. But that's what our calculations are going to have us figure out. The other piece of information that I'm given is that the other side is 24, or one of the other two sides is 24. So I could put that 24 right here. Uh, I'm going to make it standard practice to put that 24 right here. That way we're always drawing a similar triangle in a similar orientation. And if you adopt these practices, uh, you'll be in the same uh, using the same methods as I am. So I'll put a 24 there, and that would make this angle A and that little side A. When I draw these drawings, I'm going to try to draw them proportionally. Like this is my best attempt at a 38 degree angle, and notice that this length is about a quarter of the length of that. But the idea here is that once I have my angle or my picture drawn, I can determine which case I'm in. And I can see I have an angle, then a side, then a side. So I know that I'm in angle side side. Uh, so I know I'm in this case, and according to my flowchart, that means that I'm in the ambiguous case. So the way we're going to tackle this problem is we're going to tackle this angle first. You can do this problem a variety of ways, uh, but the next most 
like we know the most about angle B and side B. So these are this is the pair of information that we know. And the next most populated uh, pair that we know is this one. We have a side to go along with angle A. So we're going to attack this angle first using the law of sines. So remember, law of sines is kind of like this triple equation, and we can use any uh, two or three parts of it that we want at any one time. So uh, this one I know everything about B, so I'm going to use these two right here, uh, and then I'm going to use uh, angle A and side A right here. So I can write a little equation, a proportion equation, just like that. Remember that you're allowed to use any combination of any two of these uh, little fractions here, and you can write them each upside down if you wish. So um, I've set mine up with the known information, and I have three numbers and one unknown, so that's a good sign. Uh, I go ahead and start working on solving this. So I'm going to multiply by 24. I get a number. I just type that into my calculator. We are in degrees here today, so make sure your calculator is in degrees. And I get 2.4626. Now, I have the sign of an angle spitting out a number that's much larger than one. So already you should, hopefully most of you will identify that this is not possible. Uh, and in fact, if you try to solve this equation using an inverse trig function, so inverse sine of both sides, while still in degree mode, of course, um, you will get uh, a domain error flashing up on your calculator. Now your job is to interpret that as this is not possible, meaning that this side is too short to intersect uh, at this intersection. The other way we can confirm this is we can kind of adapt the drawing or add to the drawing to try to figure out is 6 long enough. So I'd like to figure out what this height is. And if this height right here, it's perpendicular to its base, is longer than 6, then there's no way that that 6 is going to be able to make that connection. So the way I can do that is if I draw this perpendicular line, well now I have a right triangle and I can use SOHCAHTOA. So I can write sine of 38 is h over 24, solve for h, and I find that the height of that triangle is 14.7, so there's no chance of a segment of 6 making contact with the base of this triangle. So therefore, either one of these results, you have to interpret that there is no triangle possible. Let's move on to example number 2. Go ahead and copy down the given information, and if you want to pause the video right here and try to make a drawing yourself, it's a really good practice to try to do. If not, you can watch me draw a triangle here, so I'm going to try to draw an 85 degree angle, um, and the opposing side is 7, so I'm going to label that, and the other side that I know is 6, so I'm going to put the 6 over on the left hand side. Again, I'm just kind of doing that, uh, putting the angle that I'm going to target down here. I'm just going to make a practice of doing that all the time. So again, we're going to look at that angle. And we know everything about B, and we don't know everything about A. So we're going to write a law of sines proportion equation, just like that. So we're going to set it up, just like we did with the previous problem. We're going to go ahead and solve that thing. So multiply by 6, get a number, and now you'll notice that when we do the inverse sine to solve for the size of the angle, we actually get a solution. We find that this angle right here is 58.636. That's fine and good. We can go ahead and label that. And now the question is, is it possible to swing this leg, this leg over, still with a length of 7 and still making contact down here to make kind of like a little sliver of a triangle? Is it possible for this also to be a triangle? So the outside shape is an acute triangle, but you notice the left edge of this drawing is an obtuse triangle. So I know that angle is 58, and if I swing that over, then it's an isosceles triangle, so this also has to be 58. That's a major conceptual connection that you need to make. So if I swing this over, this side length has to stay the same. Therefore, it's isosceles. Therefore, base angles are equivalent. Then I can start working on this little sliver of an obtuse triangle and see if it's even possible that that can exist. So uh, right here I have a 58 degree angle and I have a straight angle here. So I can subtract 58 from 180 and figure out what this angle right there might be. And if I do that, I find that that angle has to be 121.2. Now if I take 121.2 and I stick it in this triangle, well the other angle that was given to me, what was known, was 85 degrees. And you'll notice that if you add 85 plus 121, you're already well over 180, which makes this little sliver of a triangle impossible. So that means that there's no little sliver of a triangle possible. The outer shape, the one with sides 6, 7, and degree 85, is still possible. So I still need to work on that. Um, so at this point, I can label what I know. I can ignore that second case, and I can just go ahead and work uh, basic subtraction to find that angle. And then I'm going to do another law of sine. So now this is angle C, and this is side C. 
and I can go ahead and set up a proportion equation using the law of sines again. Uh, multiply by that sine, uh, get a number, and it's 4.166 for the length of the opposing side right there. And a lot of your problems will say solve the triangle. That means find every piece of information. So you should have a total of six pieces of information. We have three angles. We have three sides. So we're done with this problem. So far in this video, you may have noticed we've had a problem with no solutions. We've had a problem with one solution. I bet you can guess what the next example is an example of. Uh, this is going to be an example where there are two possible solutions. Uh, go ahead and try to make the drawing again. Copy down this given information, pause the video, try to make the drawing. Again, that's a very good practice. Uh, it's something that you're going to have to do to get these problems going. Okay, as I make my drawing, it turns out something like this. So I have the 34 degree angle, the side opposing it is 24, 21, sorry, and I have another known side of length 28. I'm not sure if this intersects. I could do that height calculation or that sine calculation, but again, I'm going to tackle this angle right here. I'm going to use law of sines to do that, so I'm going to write everything I know about angle B and side B, and then I'm going to compare that with angle A and side A. Doing so will provide this proportion equation, and again, we can solve it, so just do that. You notice that the sine value of the angle is under or less than 1, so it's going to provide a solution for us, which is awesome. We get 48 degrees for this angle right here. So I noticed that my drawing is a little bit too symmetric for that, so I'm going to redraw it, and you again, take the time to redraw. Draw triangles, draw triangles, draw triangles. If you notice that you're uh, wildly out of proportion, you may want to re-sketch your drawing. So check out this other drawing that I made right here with the stuff that I know labeled. So I made this angle just a little bit bigger than the angle 34, and it will help uh, just understand if this is at all possible. Okay, so now the question is, can I swing this length of 21 over to this other side and kind of make a slim sliver of an obtuse triangle over on this side. So if I swing this over, then this is still a length of 21, which makes this still an angle of 48. And then we can subtract the 48 from 180 to get that missing angle right there. It's 131. Now this time, notice if I take this obtuse angle that I just found, 131.8, and add 34 to it, that sum is less than 180 degrees. So that means that there are now two triangles possible. One uh, where the base angle is 48 and 34, and one where the base angles are 131 and 34. So if I sketch uh, each of those triangles separately, uh, and I can actually do the math right now to figure out that that's a 14.2 degree angle missing there, um, I come up with these two drawings. So at this point, I am definitely drawing two separate drawings to show two separate triangles. Uh, and I can show everything I know in this triangle and everything that I know so far in this triangle. And at this point, once we figured out that there are two cases, then all we have to do is treat it like two separate problems. There's not much left to do in this. All I have to do is find a side here and an angle here and a side there. So from there, it's just a, a standard uh, law of sines question. So we can set up a proportion equation over here on the left, solve it. We get C is 9.218, or in the other case where the base angle is 48 instead of 132, um, I'm going to go find this side, set up a, or go find the angle first, of course. Uh, that's just done by 180 minus 34 minus 48, and then set up a proportion equation and solve it. Your assignment is actually going to cover two class periods, remember. Uh, you've got a total of 10 problems to do over the course of two days, and by the end of those two days, you should report to me the solutions of number four, number eight, and number 10 on the Schoology assignment.